uh, play of the game from way down. Plus two, silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he was what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death Jeez. metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Nexus Gaming series. Tonight. We've got a game for you coming out of Division A. It's gonna be between Wipe Them Again and Rewind. And I already had to swap the sides because I was prepared. I saw that these teams were trying to fool me and I caught you at it. Uh, but for the match tonight here, we've got these Div A teams and the, let's take a look at the maps here real quick, make sure I got these updated. Uh, hold on, I didn't put that in. Got it says. All right, so Infernal Shrines was picked by Rewind. All right, now I can show you the maps. So the maps, as they were uh, banned, we've got Infernal Shrines was picked by Rewind. Their bands were Volskaya Foundry and Dragonshire. And then Sky Temple and Cursed Hollow being banned out by Wipe Them Again. We'll, uh, we'll come back after the match is complete so that you guys can see where these teams end up in the standings. Don't want to give away the results of the, uh, of the match before we get an opportunity to play it. Uh, but we're all set up and ready to go, so we're going to go right into the game here. And let me just close that out. And here we go. Game number one on Infernal Shrines. All right, let's go. Come on. There we go. Uh, let me take a look at that. Let's actually, go ahead and pause this again real quick then. So just one second, everybody. Um, hmm, I suppose we could How do, I do that. I don't think I, I don't have it set up so that a browser, because the last time I tried to use uh, Chrome, it wouldn't work. So I don't think that I can get it so that we can watch the uh, draft, unfortunately. I don't think so. I suppose I could put it on my tablet, put that in front of the uh, in front of the camera. That would be only a little bit awkward to hold that thing up for seven minutes or however long we take for draft. Yeah, I think we'll skip it. Uh, I appreciate it, Ryokai, and maybe in the future I'll I'll get something set up for that. Um, I, I, like I said, I just got to figure out what it is, what's different about the um, Chrome, uh, it's something to do with hardware acceleration or something like that, but I thought when I tried to do it, it still didn't work out, so. Let's, uh, okay, so let's get into the game here. Get these pop-ups going. All right, unpause game. All right, so for the left, we've got Rewind, right? Yeah, we got Rewind. So we've got Chaotic is gonna be on Greymane, Doom Elite on Urel, Ryokai on Phoenix, Fade on ETC, and who do you think on Anduin? And for, oh, I saw that uh, base hot spray over here. On the right, for Wipe Them Again, we've got Sovereign on Mephisto, Love Dart on Hanzo. Oops, let's try this again. Uh, Love Dart on Hanzo, Hound of Havoc on Leoric, Own Dizzer on Anna, and Twitchy on Johanna. And I'm... Really excited to see this Sovereign Mephisto. Last time I saw it, it ended up making the NGS highlights for Nexus Edge. So uh, we'll see if Rewind was paying attention to that. 
But we're going to see Urel up in the top lane already out of the gate here. And uh, we've got Arsenal Synergy. You know, I had to double check that because I've, I've seen so little of Arsenal Synergy lately. It seems like everybody's going advanced targeting or mobile offense. Uh, what else do we have? Renew, Prog Rock. Uh, we've got the Skull Missile build there for Mephisto and uh, Scatter Arrows for Hanzo. ETC slowing things down there on the rotation as both teams looking to get onto their siege camps here. Just, oh, I was going to say, is that just Anduin? No, it's Anduin and Greymane, but Fade coming in onto the Ana and Hanzo. It looks like we're going to see a rotation in from the rest of the nearby team members. Hanzo going to be first blood in the game as the siege camp actually getting the kill onto that. Ryokai looks like it's going to be the second kill. So one for one so far here, but Sovereign going to go ahead and head back. And the blue team, Rewind, coming in, has a little bit stronger position right now, but they're not going to go and finish off the camp. They're instead going to get back to soaking the lane. Greymane did, of course, pick up that mid lane siege camp, so that's got to be addressed by Wipe Them again here. And up in the top lane here, Urel and uh, Leoric doing that solo lane thing. And we did see pings out here for the siege camp, so probably calling the danger from the ETC as uh, Greymane and Nanduin picking up that bot lane camp as well. And we'll see now, ETC going to probably stall out this rotation. Maybe not. And uh, we've got Anduin by himself versus the shaman camp. This could take a little while. And uh, he didn't take Bolt Strategy at level 1, he took Renew, so he doesn't get that additional healing from doing damage to heroes. Not that it would help him on the camp. Level 4 is up for both teams, so we are seeing that Avenging Wrath build here for uh, Yurel. It'll be interesting to see if she takes that at level 7 as well, or if she goes into the Divine Steed, or the... I don't even know the name of the talent, the one that makes your hammer, like allow you to run fast. First shrine coming up here. Looks like it's going to be a mortar shrine. And we've got everybody but the solo laners here with the siege camp going in the middle and the shaman camp going in the top. So a little bit more potential value maybe for uh, rewind, especially since you rel clearing out that mid camp and it looks like Leoric's going to disengage they didn't actually clear out the mid camp. Still all of them going there. 17 to 10 right now as Leoric heading up to deal with that shaman camp. Fade knocking back the Mephisto. Gets rooted by the Chastise. Probably going to be the first kill of this team fight. Ana's grenade trying to go out to help but just a moment too late. And with 35 completed this should be a rewind punisher. As Urel coming up clearing up the mid lane. Plenty of time to finish this. And we do see the Shaman Camp was taken care of by Hound of Havoc. And now, just working on that XP soak. So, the Knoll in the mid lane does go down, and it is going to be Divine Steed for URL. Punisher jumped over the no longer existent wall. And now they're moving on to the fort. Already half health for the Punisher. The fort, however, going down pretty quickly between the Greymane and uh, Phoenix there. So first fort down, four and a half minutes into the game. Punisher still has about half of its health. Looks like we're going to see Rewind pulling back, though, as not a whole lot more value that they can expect to get out of this uh, Punisher. And level seven is now available for both teams. ETC holding that bush. Keep an eye on the rest of the Wipe Them Again crew to make sure that they don't come in and try to take advantage of this Anduin and Greymane camp. Checking in on our solo laners here. Not a whole lot going on with these guys. Pretty much your standard Saturday night watching the paint dry. Watching a linoleum curl. 
it's kind of interesting here watching as we've got three of rewind hanging out in various bushes here as Greyman picking up the camp, and we do see, there it is, Mephisto gets caught by the power slide, the uh, Chastise coming out, getting the root. Not quite enough damage, though, to secure the kill. And it looks like uh, currently about a three-quarter level lead for Rewind. Wipe them again, having to clear up this pressure in the bot lane. With that next shrine going to be in top, it's going to be a frozen punisher as well. A lot of potential siege value out of that for either team. Of course, up in the top lane here, pretty equal structure-wise. A little bit of damage to the blue tower there. Same with the red tower and a little bit on the wall. You're all getting down uh, about half there, but not too worried with that divine steed allowing her to be able to get out of dodge pretty easily and here are the level 10s purification salvo ardent defender go for the throat mosh pit light bomb it looks like right now etc just holding back this team here but kind of a dangerous spot to be in for uh wipe the again wipe them again if they try to invade in this camp so they're just gonna come down again keep this bottom lane pressure out ETC gets that mosh right onto the Hanzo. Light Bomb coming out is only going to hit Johanna, but she's er, uh, unstoppable. So she makes that out just fine. And the power slide away. So Mosh Pit not able to secure the kill onto the Hanzo. And uh, Light Bomb and Mosh Pit, only ultimates used there for Rewind. So they still have their damage abilities and, of course, Ardent Defender. And now level 10 is available on the other side. We've got the Durance of Hate. Uh, Dragon Arrow, I was going to say Strike, which is not correct. We've got the Blessed Shield on his Nano Boost and Leoric holding on to that. Maybe in Tomb, I assume. Yeah, there's that in Tomb. That level 20 silence is too good. How can you not take that? All right. And here we go, top shrine active. Rewind already here, but only three of them, so they're only gonna get a few of the defenders. Urel on her way on her divine steed, and we're gonna see this fight start to pick up in just a moment. Doomly going in, getting a little bit of damage there, a little bit of poke here, and full five on five action in the middle of the lane. Phoenix has no shield here currently. Really just a little bit of poking and skirmishing. We did see Hanzo completing that scatter arrow build, so he's got seven of those arrows now. And now the skull missile as well, reducing the cooldown a couple of seconds. And that allows you to really get that value. And Tomb blocking out half the team, but the light bomb, or I'm sorry, the uh, leap of faith pulling out. Uh, Dragon arrow going out. Warp used to keep Ryokai alive but not quite enough as Johanna securing the kill onto both Greymane and Phoenix. And Rewind gonna have to pull back here. And why, this is gonna give Wipe Them again the opportunity to get the Skeletal Defenders started. 10 seconds until both of those two are up, so very likely they'll be able to finish this shrine before they're up and available. And about that time is when uh, Entomb's going to be available as well. So Hound of Havoc coming out into the lane. Trying to keep the lane pushed up and getting helping to get that soak in the, in the top lane. And with the Frozen Punisher here, they have the potential to get some good siege damage. I don't feel like they have a lot of siege themselves. So really, they're looking for the potential to get a kill. They do get the Entomb with the Durance. Big root there. It's going to be ETC in danger but makes it out question mark no doesn't get shot in the back by an arrow and that's pretty much exactly what into or i'm sorry, into deep that's another game what wiped them again wanted here i'm gonna did i do that a couple times gosh i hope not so one fort for one fort so far between these two teams here and the next Punisher gonna be either mid or bot. 
both teams coming down, getting onto their mid lane siege camps. And again, let's take a look at these structures here in the mid lane. So walls down entirely for wipe them again. And uh, rewind doesn't have a whole lot of damage on their side. So they have a slight advantage as far as the camp's concerned there. Wipe them again coming down to pick up this camp. I'm interested to see if we're going to see a fight here. They're at least rotating down considering it. ETC going in first here. And Urel a little bit far away, coming in now. So again, once 5v5, we do see the Entomb with the Durance. Durance going out onto Urel, gets the ETC rooted as well. Big Hanzo arrow there. And that nets one for uh, two now. Currently, Ryokai able to warp away, is going to be able to, to survive there. Sovereign, however, not going to be able to survive in that chase after the... I don't know, what is he? Terran Mech? Is that, is that what he is? I have no idea what he is. Love Dark trying to get that shot. Oh, no! <laughs> I was just about to say, <laughs> Mrs. doesn't get the kill on the gray main, but... Oopsie! <sighs> oh, and Hanzo with the spray. It's almost like Love Dark knew I was going to say that. Fair enough, Hanzo. Good shot. <laughs> you hate to see it. All right, bottom pressure mounting up once again with the siege camp and the catapults. Not a lot of top pressure on the opposite end of this, um, but again, they you know they haven't had the top fort for very long, so no real value in the catapults just yet. And you're all doing a pretty good job of clearing the lane out so that they don't really have to worry so much about that pressure. But these teams are just about equal in XP. So 16 going to come up here soon for both of them as uh, wipe them again, rotating up, maybe going to their shaman camp or possibly looking for that gank onto Urel. Looks like ETC coming down, checking and pulling away. So both teams working on that shaman camp. Interested to see if either of them are going to hold it as the next shrine is in that bot lane. Well, it's not going to be wipe them again. And we are going to see rewind hold theirs. So the, the Shaman Camp right now would get slightly more value out of Wipe Them again because of the fact that they have these Catapults. So I like what they're doing, clearing up the Catapults and the Shaman Camp. I think ultimately, eventually, that Shaman Camp still will die to the pressure, but it may still get some, uh, some value in that wall. All right, once again, five on five over the Arcane Punisher Shrine here. We're going to see pretty well split up on the side of Wipe Them again, doing what they need to do to make sure they don't get a big mosh pit here. And uh, Rewind all pretty well stuck together. And here comes the Entomb out onto Anduin alone, but Durin's hitting two. There's the Hanzo arrow once again. Uh, warp interrupted, I believe, and there's the Mosh Pit coming out onto two. Gets put to sleep. Chaotic trying to dive away, get what damage he can in as uh, Ardent Defender used as well. Nano boost out onto the Leoric. And getting that kill is Mephisto, followed up by Hanzo once again, shooting Greymane. You know, when we talk about those uh, silver bullets coming out from Greymane, but it almost feels like Love Dart's got silver-tipped arrowheads here. And with that Punisher and three kills, uh, Wipe Them Again's gonna go ahead and get this Siege Camp, which will get some work done in mid lane. And with the Arcane value here, they're gonna see some damage onto this, probably at least get the fort, and it should be fairly healthy by the time it even gets to that keep wall. <laughs> Sorry, Chaotic. <laughs> All right, so everybody is available. Urel in the mid lane dealing with the waves, getting that soak, working their way to level 20. And the Punisher did leap, did get the leap of faith out, so Sovereign on the other side of this wall all by himself. And here goes... The rest of this wall, the Punisher sitting at 20% now, so that's going to go down. Prog Rock now completed, getting a little bit more healing for his team. You know, I haven't shown talents in a while. Let's show that. Got a few things there that uh, maybe 
could be valuable here, getting that armor from the power slide. The uh, auto attack slows coming from Johanna with that imposing presence. And a life drain build for Leoric. Punisher mid lane next time, so that'll be in a couple minutes as uh, we are going to see Wipen again come over to their camp and get started on this as they've got the pressure in the bottom lane and they also have a pretty significant wave up in top. You're always going to go up and take care of that. That's going to give them a, a nice hefty push towards level 20, but again, these teams are pretty close in XP. Once Ural cleans that up, I think they'll be almost dead even. But now this is this is an uneven fight. Hanzo Arrow going out onto ETC just barely misses the Durance, but there is going to be an Entombment available here. Knockback going out. The Entomb onto the Squishies here. Greymane and Anduin. Greymane diving over. The Light Bomb going out. Looks like Hound of Havoc taking a lot of damage from that Greymane and Purification Salvo doing some work. Hound of Havoc can be the first death out of this. And ETC going in onto Johanna, Johanna, face melting her back. Chaotic, once again, very low, has to pull back a bit there, but Johanna is going to be the second kill. Rewind coming back into this, making it work, but they do end up losing two now themselves as Ardent Defender popped. Not a whole lot of value out of it because they stopped attacking her, and it looks like they might actually get the second kill onto, uh, I'm sorry, third kill onto Urel. So three for two, ultimately, the full front line out of Wipe Them Again. Uh, and just Greyman and Anduin left alive for Rewind. So slight advantage here for Wipe Them again. They're almost level 20s now. They're going to work out the mid, mid fort. And so Leoric back available now. A lot of pressure coming up here as level 20s coming up. Let's take a look at these. So the, uh, the Storm Shield talent. What is it, Blind by the Light or something like that? Yeah. Uh, for Johanna, the upgraded in Tomb, that's going to be a real problem for Rewind there. The upgrade, uh, play them again, or play it again. Play, play of the game. There we go. Play of the game. Uh, Mimic, getting that extra Lightning Nova. And then Armored Stance. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So sh while she's uh, walking around like an old grandma, she's getting that additional armor. Level 20 is coming up here soon. For Rewind, should be available by the time the, the Punisher comes up. Again, this is a Frozen Punisher, so should be able to lock down the keep for sure if Wipe Them Again picks it up. Imagine at least the fort goes down here, and maybe even the keep with a Frozen Punisher in the mid lane for uh, Rewind if they pick it up. So right away, we have Wipe Them Again, but nobody wants to attack any of the Skeletal Defenders. Too busy setting up a play here. We are going to see the Spooky Hand going on to ETC. Sovereign coming in, spreading that damage out. ETC looking for a Mosh, most likely here. And now both of these teams really have to be careful about their positioning between the Mosh and the Entomb. And Entomb's going to come out here very soon. There it is onto Greymane and Urel. The Leap of Faith pulling Greymane out. But uh, ETC gets rooted and pulled out too late. Uh... We also did see Phoenix going down there, and I missed it. Chaotic trying to run away, dives in to get that additional armor, but that's going to be a third kill. And now just with Anduin and Urel, 36 of the defenders picked up so far by Wipe Them Again, and with this Frozen Punisher, it would not surprise me to see this be the end of Game 1. I imagine Urel and Anduin sitting there looking at their kits, Looking at their abilities, what the timers are, trying to figure out any way that they can defend this. And I don't know that they have it. There's no uh, no ardent defender, so really their only offensive ability is the light bomb. 15 seconds on ETC and Phoenix. And uh, the Entomb used, there goes the Durance of Hate follow-up. So that's going to be another kill, getting onto Anduin. And that's going to be the end of game number one. <laughs> Sovereign popping off that taunt at the end of the game, just showing who the king of Mephisto is in Division A. All right, let's take a quick peek at these stats here. Six kills to 17. Talents there on your screen. We did see those level 20 talents. Uh come up for rewind so we got that double 
uh, Leap of Faith and the uh, Bolt of the Storm, the splash damage from uh, the human attacks, or the blunderbuss, that an unstoppable, and then this is the shield, right? Yeah, so the shield for Ryokai, trying to keep him alive there on those big bursts coming out from the Mephisto and Hanzo. Stats. Urel and Leoric really uh, keeping pretty pretty even there. But not too far behind are Mephisto and Hanzo, so, you know, pretty significant value there. Hero damage, though, Mephisto way on top there. Double the amount that uh, Ryokai had for Phoenix. Hailing a little bit more in favor of Ana there. And tanking and XP there, so. All right, let's hop up here and get game number two set up. Make sure that I give that to the right team. I guess literally, right? I mean, they're on the right, the red team. Yeah, haha. <laughs> All right, game number two. So game number two is gonna be on Towers of Doom. And let's see, I believe that the red team picked this one. Let me double check. Uh, let's see, Towers of Doom, they picked Towers. Okay, so yeah, red team. And we give them the point. Yep, they got the point. Let's just update who the players are on the teams here. Oh, interesting. Oh, goody. So we're going to see my first opportunity to see uh, Kira played. Which is great, because I have no idea what any of her talents are. She's going to be doing a lot of things and stuff. All right. Jaina. How y'all doing tonight? I don't know why, but it feels like a Friday. I know that it's a Wednesday, but it feels like Friday. All right, all set up there. We've got the map set up. We've got the point. I don't think there's anything else we're waiting on. Let me go ahead and hop into this game, Towers of Doom. Game number two between Rewind and Wipe Them Again. So our teams here, interesting setup. Stuns, Roots, potentially Taunts with Moshes. Turn that off, turn that off, here we go. All right, we will get started with the red team this time. Coming off a hot win on Infernal Shrines we have wiped them again. We've got Ondizer on Ana, Hound of Havoc on Varian, Twitchy going to be playing ETC, Love Dart on Greyman, and Sovereign on Jaina. And looking to get this on to a game number three, we have Rewind. Chaotic going to be playing Kira, Doom Elite on Blaze, Sylvanas going to be played by Ryokai, Arthas on Fade, Fade on Arthas. Who do you think? On Lucio. Let's take a look at these talents here. So pretty much the only talent I see Kira picking up is that quest talent. Got the party mix, new habits, the root talent for uh, Arthas. I wonder what the name of that talent is. Let's look at that. Fatal Wounds, makes sense. Doing extra damage when they're under half health. And Kira's a very different hero. Getting extra damage out of heroes being under half health and having talents to support that. We also do have that uh, Frostbite talent for Jaina. Pretty standard the prog rock again and we're gonna see high king's quest for varian as sylvanas and kira coming down into the bot lane a little bit faster than the rest of the team lucio hanging a little bit behind as wipe them again makes their way down to clean up the bot lane we're already seeing pings here about the danger presumably about the arthas kira soloing in the mid lane here is going to be able to walk away and just, uh, you know what, let's take a look at Kira's abilities here. So, Kira has this Q talent, which, called Carnage, which throws out a Lance kind of thing, puts up a dot, as you see there on the minions. She also has her 
uh, Revolving Sweep, which targets an individual, uh, or not a target, it's, it's a skill shot. And if you hit a hero, allows her to go around in a circle that you can then re-trigger, pop back in, knock them back a little bit. And then her W, which is basically just free damage and healing based on uh, the number of dots she has on targets. Um, and her trait being that dot damage that we just talked about. Kind of like Ana, you know, she attacks, she puts dots up. And then her, uh, she can use her grappling hook to target either like a player or a, like a wall to pull her into, uh, an, into the fray, if you will, or out to safety. So we'll see how those abilities work out here. We'll also see, I think, uh, as the heroes have increasing dots on them, uh, their player, uh, their, oh, but, darn it, I was a little bit, little bit too late there. Just barely caught the, uh, the kill, I think, but very going in a little deep with that Colossus smash. Not able to secure the kill on the blaze, of course, but instead going down. Love Dart, however, getting slowed for days by Arthas. But he's going to be able to make it out. Sovereign has no mana, no mana left here. So what I was going to say about the dots is you can kind of see that the, uh, the players have dots on them, increasing up to five by like a kind of a reddish, pinkish aura that surrounds them. So we'll have to watch for that. Yeah, you can see it kind of on these minions here as it just went away. All right, top lane. We've got more than one. Lucio is going to pick up bot lane. Sylvanas is down there as well. And we're going to see the invade coming out from wipe them again. And it's going to be all five of them coming in here. Blaze getting stunned out of his jet propulsion there. Gets knocked back. Varian trying to secure the kill but not quite able to do so. Is going to get to channeling. But with the rest of the team here, it's not going to be quite that simple. And there's that revolving sweep, knocking the ETC back, using that carnage, and that power slide onto Arthas. Arthas is in danger here, just a little bit of health. The dive in from Graining does get the kill. And now Arthas, uh, sorry, now Varian, switching over to that Kira to get some damage onto her. So it looks like two altars going over to wipe them again with the one in the bot lane being picked up by Rewind. Uh, and Sylvanas down here is going to be able to uh, clear out this minion wave pretty quickly. I don't think she's going to be able to get to the tower before Greyman comes in. Um, although it looks like Greyman is going to the siege camp. So they're going to let Jaina instead come down and, and make sure that they soak this lane and that Sylvanas doesn't get that free structure value. And Lucio hanging out in the middle here, just kind of... Poking away, taunting the enemy team. Oh no, guys. Not supposed to see kills in the solo lane. That's not how this works. Sorry. Sorry for missing that. Sure, I'm sure that, uh... Is it Love Dart playing? No, Love Dart's playing Greymane. Uh, Sovereign? No, Sovereign's Jaina. Hound of Havoc. Yeah, I'm sure Hound of Havoc doesn't mind me missing those. And now with the Merc Queen, we've got these empowered Pumpkin Sappers, but ETC Power Slide uh, didn't, either didn't hit or it was very short cooldown there. It seemed like it went away very quickly. Oh, of course it went very, away very quickly because Arthas used his Icebound Fortitude, which reduces cooldown or reduces the timer of uh, disabling effects. So Varian up in the top lane, trying to keep as much of that uh, top lane alive as possible. Level 9 to level 8, a full level of XP advantage going over to Rewind. And here they are coming in. Slowing things down, keeping ETC and Grey Main locked down in that choke point. Got all five of Rewind nearby, if not necessarily on the point. But we, we do get the stall out of Jaina. Let's take a look at that uh, build again. So we got the full frost build. build. And uh, the stall from Varian that time, able to su successfully stop it. Twitchy, however, getting low, is going to be the first kill out of this. Chaotic, also very low. Pulling back here. Love Dart on the gray main. Getting slowed by Arthas. There's the root. But Arthas coming back. 
Trying to zone out, make sure that they can gather these points. Jaina getting killed off to the side there. And uh, Arthas once again creating a, a, a presence, a wall that they cannot get out of. Hound of Havoc, the Wailing Arrow coming out to silence him. And Chaotic trying to push him back, but uh, not quite able to make it. Fatal Strike missing, kind of in the in the dark there, hoping to hit the, uh, the Varian, I assume. And now we've got a root onto the ETC and Greymane, pulling him back in once again, the face melt, knocking him away. But ultimately, the value going on to this bottom fort, as it is melting quickly. I don't think that they're going to be able to finish this off. Grappling hook used by Chaotic to get out of there. Still taking a fair amount of damage as the sound barrier brought in, but now ETC is the one in danger. This level 10 to 9 fight looks like it's going to be enough for them to secure that kill and finish off the party mechs as they are now mo moving on to the sapper camp all right the rest of these ultimates so we noticed that fatal strike a very short cooldown almost like sundering type effect i think it's just slightly uh longer distance um and it does additional damage when the target is low on health uh we did see the wailing arrow we've got the sound barrier uh bunker fallen out of favor but it's back and then, uh, I'm assuming that was a, uh, Army of the Dead, right? Let's take a look. That Army of the Dead? Sure is Army of the Dead. Level 10 is now coming on for Wipe Them Again. As the first Pumpkin Sapper does take out the bottom fort. So we've got Ring of Frost, Shield Wall, Mosh Pit, Eye of Horus, and Cursed Bullet. Important to note that Eye of Horus can stall from anywhere on this map. Can also be used as a vision tool if necessary. And with this bottom fort, it makes it very difficult for Wipe Them Again to get the bottom altar. So I expect to see them just try to focus on the mid altar. Take the altars and, put in and we already see Lucio picking up that bottom altar, getting that channel going, and looking at Rewind to try to stall out what they can here until Lucio can make it. Now it's a full 5-on-5. Five five. Everybody's here. Fade's getting low. Gets that Colossus Smash. But ultimately is the Eye of Horus going through, keeping everybody alive. Two-man root from that Ring of Frost as Bunker used in the back line there. Jaina pulling back because she got so very low. Ryokai in a bit of danger, maybe. Maybe not. It's four on two here now as Wipe Them Again fully spread out here in kind of a crescent. Jaina getting zoned off there. Can't really come back into this at her current state. And now ETC getting pulled by that revolving sweep. But put to sleep is Kira. The root hitting ETC and Varian. Now Fade has no mana, has to back away. We are going to see the mosh pit onto Kira. Good night. And uh, Sylvanas finishing off that ETC. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but ETC was splayed out in that, uh, in that fire, that flaming oil. Uh, just perfectly. Looked just like it was a barbecue. So three points going over to wipe them again. 29 to 24. And with the advantage of the dead Kira on the other side of the map, I expect them to try to see if they can't get this back. They're, they're clearing the minion waves at least. And now that ETC is back here, they can have a little bit more frontline presence. Looks like Kira going into the mid lane, keeping that soak up. The R level 13s. Let's pop those up for here a moment. But again, Sylvanas can clear these so quickly, so they've really got to make something happen. They don't have anything like a Anubarak Beetles or Army of the Dead. So they just have to make something happen when the minion wave comes in. It looks like they're just going to go ahead and back away here because... They're not, uh, they're not getting that kill that they need. And now they're coming back in. A little bit of a dance. Sending Greymane mid to deal with the blaze. They've got Varian in the top lane working on that camp. Trying to catch up to this level 13. And calling for the pings onto the Greymane. So we'll see if they can catch this kill. But it looks like uh, ETC and Ana able to help out with that. And leaving Jaina in the bot to defend against this sapper push but once again this bot lane fort making it oh my goodness almost getting that kill onto ryokai but uh this bot lane fort gonna make it very difficult for them to come in and 
really contest that bottom altar. So they've got to get onto this now while they can, while the team is pretty much split. And get this before Rewind can make it in. But it looks like they're not quite able to do that with the minion wave that they had. So once again, we're going to have a 5-on-5 five five here. Along with a Sapper Camp coming on the way. Pinging that retreat 29 to 19 now. Game slightly in favor of Rewind. Pumpkin Sappers, these guys are going to die pretty quickly to the Jaina, so. Right now, just uh, stalling things out. We do have the triple altars showing on the map now. Can't remember if I showed there, so we'll show those again real quick here. And the solo laners taking a step off. Now we're going to see ETC getting that revolving strike on him. Pulled in. The mosh pit gets booped away. And that's going to be one dead cow. Followed up by Jaina and make it a triple with Varian as well. On the bright side, uh, they do almost have the fort down now. So the next time they put any pressure there, they should be able to take it out. However, we've got now Rewind going for that middle fort. Soaking up that mid lane, getting this wall down. And don't forget, we've got the triple altar phase coming here very soon. My timing is impeccable. Level 16 is available for Rewind here. Popping up these talents because... I know I want to come back and check out this Kira build later. Just so I can understand what to do with her. But Jaina now already getting uh, some damage from the fort, I think it was. And it looks like she's going to go down as Chaotic knocking her back away from her team. And this is not the time you want to be down a player. Not down triple altars. Varian is going to be able to channel this top one, it looks like. So that's at least uh, the consolation prize for him here. You don't know the, the care build either. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, Chaotic. All right, so once again, coming in, we've got the Sappers with the Merc Queen. So three Sappers making it all the way to the fort. We'll bring it down, I think, about 75%. Grayman getting rooted there. Uh, okay, so about two-thirds. And they are going to be able to pick this up very quickly for once again picking up that bottom fort so five points available per shot double altars in the top along with the boss so in theory a team fight won by rewind could be the end of the game so wipe them again has to be a little bit perhaps more cautious than normal here and now, uh, that bottom fort, less value. Of course, it's important. It gives them an extra point, but it's less It's less important now because these altars are in the top lane. So they can deal with that at another time right now. Try to get some value elsewhere. Try to get that 16, which they just picked up here. So let's take a look at that. So we got the movement speed for Varian at uh, level 16 there. The root for Jaina. And that armor on the power slide again for ETC. So here we go. Double altars coming up. Let's see what happens. Varian picking up that top uh, sapper camp. Nothing uh, much to talk about right now, so you know. We do have Hand of Havoc picking up the vision in the middle in the middle of this circle here. But uh, Jane is in the bot lane, so the, I I I no oh, well. Own Dizzer is going to be able to pick up the channel, so it's not going to end up being the game. But uh, Hound of Havoc trying to get out. Unfortunately, not going to be able to do so. Yeah, knowing that Jaina wasn't there made that a really easy fight for them. And that's going to give them the opportunity to not, al not only get the five points from the altar, they're also going to get the four points from the boss. And now this is a single altar game anywhere on the map or even any camp on the map. So I don't know. I I don't know that I like the play. I don't know that I dislike the play. Having Jaina not there probably made that. Yeah, and and this is 
getting more and more difficult. But the mid fort, not that big of a deal. They are going to have, again, the double altars in the top, however. Greymane by himself going to have to rotate through the bottom area here. I thought he was going to go all the way back by his fort, but he's just trying to hide. And once again, this siege camp being picked up is going to give the value to rewind, allowing them to get significant damage onto this fort. With the Sylvanas, they can bring it all the way down here. And Love Dart, pretty far forward there. May be able to dive onto this Sylvanas, though. If the team can uh, can catch this, this could be a big win for them. But again, nobody knows where Greymane's at. So double altars here. So we do have Eye of Horus for Ana, so she can stall out the enemy team from very far away. But not if she's channeling their own objective. Oh, and the big stun mosh pit ring combo coming out. But they gotta stop that Kira, and it looks like Varian's going in by himself. Nano Boost coming out to stall out the Kira. Hound of Havoc doing what he can here. Gets obliterated by that final strike, though. And Ana going down in the back as well. So two for two so far. As uh, Love Dart very low, and they don't have a healer now. So Love Dart's going to potentially go back and channel. Looks like that's the case. And ETC and Jaina trying to stall this out because this channel loses the game for them. And Jaina going down all but secures this here as Chaotic trying to work on the channel. Love Dart doesn't have enough health really to fight this. Second interrupt though onto that. It is Final Strike, right? I'm not just making that that name. Yeah, Final Strike, okay. And unleash potential, uh, giving the additional cooldown reduction when killing somebody very quickly after the uh, the slice happens, or of course when somebody else does, or if you kill them with it. So game number two gonna go over to rewind. So we are gonna get that game number three here. Winner the blue team. I'm going to leave these stats up for everybody to look at while I set up the teams here. Make that go a little bit faster anyways. Or, oh, I guess I can't set up the teams, can I? I can double check who had the third map. Third map was Altrak Pass. So I can put that in. Altrak was the blue team. One and one. All right, let's pop off these stats. So first of all, kills, or deaths rather, Lucio and Blaze never going back to the graveyard because of death at least. And uh, Love Dart bringing the numbers on the hero damage. And take a, take a look at these level 20 talents, of course. So we did see that up upgraded bunker, too. Uh, Death's Advance, I think is what this is called, right? Yeah, for uh, Arthas. There you go, 17 to 4. A little bit uh, in the other direction this game. Rewind, pulling back. We did never see the High King's Quest get completed. Wonder which... Uh, oh, couldn't, because you have to kill five people. So there you go. All right, well, let's get uh, set up here for game number three on Altrak Pass. I'd ask who you guys are rooting for, but it doesn't quite have the same effect when some of you already know who wins. But for what it's worth, I do appreciate you guys keeping the teams on the same sides, even if it's not the correct side. <laughs> Go rewind, right? Of course. <laughs> Uh, Rainer. All right. Not a lot of uh, matches being cast tonight. There are a fair number of them out there, but uh, unfortunately just... Not a lot of casters available to pick them up tonight. So once we're done here, 
you can uh, you can catch in about a uh, 45 minutes. So shortly after, you'll be able to catch Save the Murloc versus Calculated Throw. That's a Division C East game. Uh, Bahamut's going to be casting that one. I'll see if I can send everybody over there once we're done here. Followed up by Probe One versus Archon in the Heroic Division. Bahamut once again also casting that match. And then later tonight, Lion Speed versus Into Deep. Uh, going to be picked up by Hero Physio. So make sure that you uh, keep an eye out for those. Um, other matches may get picked up, so make sure you're keeping an eye on the calendar for potentially uh, additional casters to pick those up. But we're all set up and ready to go for game number three between Rewind and Wipe Them Again. So let's go ahead and get this started. One to one. Only one team can win the match and ultimately have the tiebreaker. I can't wait to go back and look at the standings. I'm going to have to see where everybody is on this. Let's see. Okay, and let's go to the game. Game number three. Here we go. Let's uh, let's start with Rewind this time. Picking up that big W in game number two. We have Ryokai on Raynor, Doom Elite on Arthas, Fade on Anubarak, Chaotic on Sylvanas, and who do you think on Lucio? And for Wipe Them again, Own Dizzer on Ana, Twitchy on Diablo, Hound of Havoc on Artanis, Love Dart on Greyman, and Sovereign on Mephisto. I did that too quickly. I need to say those slower. There's nothing to talk about here. So game number three between these Div A teams. And let's pop up these talents here. So these teams, prior to this game, uh, Rewind sitting at 23 points. Wipe them again, sitting at 10 points. So quite a disparity in the positioning there. But ultimately, so far these games have been... Pretty heavily in favor of one team or the other. So we'll see how this, for the most part, we'll see how game number three turns out if this is a blowout or is it going to be a fairly even balance. And already we do see here the uh, party mix once again. We've got, uh, I don't know, Frostborn Hungers? Eternal Hunger for Arthas. Feast on Fear from Diablo, but that uh, Shadow Charge interrupted by the Impale. And now Diablo deep into the blue health bar is coming out. Arthas keeping him slow, and that looks like it's going to be the first blood of the game right at the one-minute mark. Sovereign, maybe the second. Oh, it is. All right, and we see our heroes splitting off into their individual lanes. Artanis trying to catch the Ryokai with that swap. Not quite able to, but hitting that uh, W onto Ryokai, sending him back to the tap. And we have Lucio and Sylvanas getting onto the camp early, making sure that they can have this available again when the prison camp spawns. What else have we got going on here? Artanis now making his way to their uh, null camp. And interesting uh, setup here. So we've got the ranged versus the melee in each of these two lanes here. The Arthas versus Greymane and uh, Raynor versus Artanis up in the top. <laughs> Green and get a little cheeky. Wanted to get these shots in. Doesn't mind getting too close to Arthas there. So Lucio uh, uh, electing to hold on to the camp here. So rather than pick it up and have it available again when the prison camp comes up, they're going to wait until the prison camp is up and then throw it out there for the pressure in the lane. And with level fours coming up, I expect to see a Merc Queen. I see it. And that's when they pick up the Null Camp so that they can get the value out of uh, Sylvanas' Merc Queen. And keeping in mind, of course, these Nulls with their cleaving attacks do reduce the armor of uh, whatever they're attacking, whether it's a structure or a player. So certainly expect to see some significant pressure here, although we do have a three versus three going on. So far, no significant damage onto the heroes. They're really trying to focus on the camp. I'm 
At least on the from the wipe them again side. And checking out here, so Greyman and Arthas are coming up. Prison camp now available, and Pale hits all three. Hound of Havoc deep in is gonna be another kill here. Fade getting uh, pulled into the wall, but Sylvanas shutting those down, getting a little bit of damage while she's at it. So only the one kill here. So three to nothing so far for Rewind. And uh, looking to get the lane soaks going on here. So ultimately a little bit surprised by this. I'm surprised we didn't we don't see any action onto the cavalry, but it looks like mostly they want to focus on getting level seven, bring their whole team together, rewind slightly closer to that level seven. So they're moving forward. They can see Artanis in the top, Greyman in the bot, and they're going to get that channel started. And now 5v4 here over the prison camp. With Greyman in the bot lane working on the towers here, already has those towers down. Sorry for the quick look there, but I didn't want to miss this. We do see Lucio getting that healing penalty from Ana. The, uh, war ah, man, I don't remember. Phase Prism almost hitting onto who do you think, but Lucio's a slippery little guy. And now Arthas trying to slow down the Diablo. Diablo almost catching uh, who do you think to get him taken out. But look at these health bars. The blue side's so very low, but they're just staying alive with that uh, reverse amp coming up from Lucio, and they're going to be able to finish the channel's Hound of Havoc going down. In the bot lane, however, Greymane already getting this fort down about two-thirds, and that is a big boost for them. That it, In fact, that's absolutely huge, as the camp now... I mean, oftentimes your first camp doesn't get you more than maybe a fort. Oftentimes just walls. And that's... That's huge for uh, Wipe Them Again to be able to get that first structure down, even without having the cavalry. So, that being said, Sylvanas. And Sylvanas can really provide value with the uh, cavalry, so we'll see how much they're able to pull out with uh, these Ram Riders coming in right now. And once again... Kind of uneven uh, solo lanes with Rainer V. Artanis, Arthas versus Greymane here. Let's check in on our other lanes just real quick here. Both of these going down pretty quickly here. Let's swap into Rainer. He's going to be able to get out relatively safely. And the mid Ram Rider goes down, and as we as we see here. Basically, walls are all that they get, but they're going to be able to get a kill onto this Greymane. What a root coming out from Doom Elite. And that could give them the additional pressure, especially with this boss play that they're calling for with level 10s. And out of those level 10s, we've got the Sound Barrier, Army of the Dead, Wailing Arrow, Rainer's Raider, and uh, yeah, you can just go ahead and show the cocoon. Nobody's ever going to believe you were even considering Locust Swarm. So they know that they're at the boss. There's not a lot that they can do about it. They need to be getting 10. They don't have anybody in the mid lane soaking. Artanis is going to get onto their null camp. So I expect this is a pretty much a free fort, equalizing them out in the bot lane. Diablo getting uh, stunned by the Impale, flipping Chaotic into it there. The root going out onto Diablo, and his health bar is just melting. But he's able to make it out as they're focused entirely on getting this bottom fort still no tens and a nearly full boss thanks to the sylvanas now tens nano boost lightning breath go for the throat durance of hate and uh i mean i'm assuming suppression pulse yeah it'll be suppression pulse all right so artanis versus arthas in the mid lane we're gonna forget that even exists because i don't want to try to say that too often but we do see that durance going out onto the anubrac the skull missile landing but that's all the damage they had so it looks like the boss is going to finish off the full wall and the tower and that's an impressive amount of counter pressure in the bot lane coming out from rewind ultimately balancing out the fort and also getting those towers
And Rainer clearing up the camp in the mid lane, allowing Sylvanas, Lucio, and Anubarak to get onto the null camp here for the blue side. Rewind, gonna have that going during the camp, the prison camp. And about a half a level to go for uh, Rewind. Again, this is a four versus four now. And they're choosing to back away. Now Artanis is here, though, so there's a five versus four for at least a few seconds. Suppression Pulse going out, keeping them blind for a few moments. But that is now over, so their potential damage reduction there is gone. Durance of Hate landing onto Sylvanas. Charge stun from Diablo. I think maybe the phase, or the warp, whatever, phase prism. Uh, probably could have landed there too, so they probably had a little counter synergy there, but Rainer's gonna go down. Fade looking to die as well with that Skull Missile from Mephisto, and Mephisto himself pulling off three kill shots in this fight. Artanis heading back to clean up as much of this camp as quickly as possible to prevent the fort from going down, as eventually it would have with as much pressure as there was here. We've got Arthas in the top, Lucio in the mid, trying to get what he can damage-wise onto this structure while uh, there are plenty of minions to go. And about 15 seconds left as the pings called coming in for the prison camp in level 13 advantage. Now going over to Rewind. The stall from Diablo. Here comes that suppression pulse. Slowing down that Rainer damage. A little bit on the Sylvanas as well. And we are missing our Tannis, so this is a very questionable uh, offensive action here from wipe them again and uh fade in pretty deep potentially goes down does in fact go down mephisto trying to spread that lightning nova around but it's going to be Greymane followed up there and nano boost coming out and wow the health bar coming out just healing as much as possible out of the uh skull missile there but army of the dead sustaining arthas anna has no health has to pull away i think hound of havoc probably dies here in fact does and that's going to give the channel over now to rewind and i think they wiped them again probably just stayed too long right they had they had artanis on their null camp which by the way only one of them is dead they'll probably come up and try to finish this now um and uh, they just tried to stay in way too long for an uneven fight and also down a talent here. So I don't, I don't know that they necessarily still would have been able to get the cavalry if they had pulled back. Of course, Rewind would have come in. They would have had to back away, soak that lane, get to 13. But they certainly had a better chance, I think. But that's just one caster's opinion. Once again, 4v5 here, though. Uh, we do get that uh, Suppression Pulse. Durance of Hate landing onto the Anubarak. Doesn't spread to anybody as Love Dark getting brought very low. Cocoon going out onto Ana, and that could be uh, a dead Diablo coming up soon here, but uh, maybe not. Just in time, the big Impale hitting four is enough to allow for the disengage and the pick up of the Ram Riders once again for Rewind. All right, Mephisto heading back to tap as there's no tap in the mid lane, and they're going to get onto these Ram Riders in the middle. The farthest forward here as Artanis heading to the top and just uh, pop up these talents again for you as level 16 is going to be coming up soon. Suppression Pulse going out does not hit Rainer this time, so doesn't get the reduced damage value that it potentially could have, only onto the Sylvanas. And now they're heading up top, and if you're Artanis, this is a bad moment for you because Arthas already keeping you low, slowing your auto attacks, preventing your shields from happening. And your team sacrificing you to head off down to clear up the Ram Riders in the bot lane because, of course, that's going straight into the keep. The top lane still has a pretty healthy uh, objective, getting that push. Uh, bro charge in from Anubarak, shutting down the structure. We do have a two-man endurance. However, Mephisto going right into a cocoon, and it looks like Diablo is going to be just fine. No worries. Completely calculated. And Lightning Breath coming out, trying to stop this uh, this dwarf Ram Rider from getting on the keep and finishing the job. So one lane of pressure, of catapult pressure occasionally. Catapults. Reavers, whatever they are. Coming out for Rewind. 
But with this, uh, with this now value, they're going to be able to get this boss started. And I don't see any way that at this point, wipe them again is going to be able to stop it. And the problem here is, is that a boss, even with the armor, the boss can offset the armor penalty. So this could provide them uh, a win. Although, honestly, I don't expect them to go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that they're probably more likely to come down here and try to take this fight. Boss by itself will be cleared up with just one uh, keep down. They would have to have two keeps down to be able to do that. So, Anubrax here. Looking to probably burrow in right now. Yep. And there it goes. We're going to see that Durance. Didn't see the Impale, though. We do see a Sound Bearer Cocoon going out onto Mephisto, and the boss is picked up by Wipe Them Again. Both of the frontline tanks gone here as Arthas slowing down the Greymane. Lucio just skating his way to safety, dodging the Phase Prism from Hound of Havoc. And Hound of Havoc now getting rooted, but is going to be able to survive thanks to the zoning value of that boss. And Lucio instead going to be the kill. And uh, followed up by Savannah's kill as Greymane going in and going for the throat. Let's take a look here, see uh, just how much damage this boss has taken. Yeah, it's, he's 20% now. Even before uh, they got back to clean this up, this was already pretty low and the core pretty healthy. So that, that ultimately would have been fine, but... It wouldn't have been fine if uh, if they won that fight. If, if Rewind won that fight, they'd be able to just go straight top and finish that up. Prison camps now available. 50 seconds on the channel timer. A little bit longer. Both teams getting to work on their null camps. And this time, Artanis is not going to leave it behind. He wants all three of those nulls pushing in this lane. Especially since uh, they've got to equalize out that occasional reaver pressure. And the first team to make it to the prison camp is going to be wipe them again. And we'll see if they can make this one uh, stick here. The suppression pulse going out onto the back line. Not quite able to prevent the stall onto Sovereign though. So we'll see how much damage he can do. And uh, Fade already very low here. The Durance goes out, hits onto, I can't even tell, Arthas. But it's going to be Artanis first going down. Mephisto now sitting in that cocoon. Very low on the front line here from Rewind as Nurburak burrow charges his way to death. And now things are looking a lot more positive for Wipe Them again than they did just a few seconds earlier. Rewind, getting this bot or I'm um, sorry, mid lane pressure cleared up, and also don't keep keep in mind that bot lanes get mounting up there for them too. So, uh, love dart clearing up, stalling out the channel, but Twitchy in danger here from the damage coming out from Rainer and uh, Sylvanas here. Sovereign now as well, using that Skull Missile to heal up. Doesn't have a lot of mana, though. Neither does Diablo and Greymane sitting at no health. Arthas just slowing them down here. Going to be able to secure the kill onto both Diablo and Mephisto. Possibly now Ana as well, with no fort to retreat to. And she is a slow, slow grandma. 15 seconds left on the timer for Wipe Them Again, and level 20s with those kills coming online for Rewind, giving them even more pressure coming out of this. And with these long death timers, I don't think there's anything that uh, Wipe Them Again can do to stop this cavalry. 35 seconds, so there'll be only be about 10 seconds, and I don't think they can get there quickly enough to stall it out. And it looks like uh, Rewind using this camp to bring down this mid fort. And with his, as far up as these lanes are pushed, this is looking more and more like a death blow from Rewind. Two, two of the Ram Riders coming straight into the core with a five on five fight here. I feel like uh, the only thing that Wipe them again can do is take a full five five man fight, try to get a kill from somebody. Uh, instead, they're trying to soak for 20, and I don't think that that even works. I think that these two Ram Riders are more than enough to finish the core 
if they're not stopped uh, fast enough. All right, let's check this out. We've got uh, the bush gank over here, setting up for the bot lane. Lucio just hanging out near this wall. He doesn't need a bush, he doesn't care. Calling for the defense in the bot lane and, you know, this is perfectly fine. If you're uh, rewind, those cavalry are gonna do so much damage to the core that they have to split up. And they do, Artanis up above, gets the blind out, the burrow charge in, stun in onto Love Dart. Cocoon out onto Ana, and now Fade going down once again. Very low uh, health just going in. Lightning Breath coming out to disengage uh, the Rewind team, but both of the cavalry here already on the core, and look at how quickly that goes down. Rewind didn't even have to touch it. So game number two going over to Rewind. And, uh, you know, I have to say that game looked very strong for Wipe Them Again at the very beginning there. Getting the um, getting the bottom fort right out of the gate. Getting more value out of the, uh, the, the, the siege that Greymane provided than all of what the cavalry had provided for Rewind. Uh, but eventually those... Ultimates came online, they fell a little bit behind in XP, and of course the Sylvanas value on this map simply cannot be understated. She provides so much. And, you know, just just look at these numbers. 130k hero damage, almost double the damage that Sylvanas provided for her team, and yet 18 kills to 9 kills. So much damage, so much value, but ultimately Lucio able to keep it keep his team alive through all of that and the cocoons helping to stall out the deaths on the other side uh healing here 123 to 95k not super surprising given the um individual characters and uh damage and the xp all right it is 637 which means that uh i don't think bahamut's gonna be all set up and ready to go yet did I get the teams? I did. So you know what? Let's uh, let's pop up here real quick. Let's take a look at the standings. Rewind sitting at the top of Div A with 25 points. Wipe them again. Sitting right in that eighth spot, clutching onto the bottom of the playoffs uh, with 11 points, tied with Regen Retro and Lion Speed. So of course, these standings are not necessarily based on reality. We don't know what their um, tiebreakers are, so you know it's entirely possible that they could actually be the sixth seed right now. But uh, not a lot of point difference between 10 and five. Any one of those teams could make it uh, into the playoffs at this point, even number 11 in too deep could make it into the playoffs with uh, even with just a single win, potentially, depending on who, who they won against. So keep an eye on Div A. This is, this is some pretty serious competition for the uh, lower half of the playoff bracket. And, uh, and that's it. That's all we got. So let's take a look and see if there's anybody out there that we can raid, shall we? Who do we got out there? Um, nobody. Really? There's nobody? Hold on a second. There's got to be somebody. We could go to... Uh, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's send everybody over to Slexia. There you go, Slexia. So good games to everybody. Rewind and wipe them again. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure and uh, have a wonderful day and enjoy your next games. Don't forget to get the rest of your flex matches done if you haven't already.